Peachtree Audio Grand Integrated. So this customer brought this in to me and it has a hum on one channel. So let's get the top open and take a look at what's inside. What might be causing the hum on one channel? Oh, just take a look at this thing. There's the power supply board. Oh, look at all the rectifiers and filter caps. Nice toroidal transformer back there. The input board. Bunch of surface mount caps, which I don't like, but maybe it'll be okay. But take a look at the power amplifier boards right here. Those look like they're Class D digital amplifiers. Look at that. Little transformer, bunch of caps. Oh, is that one bulged? Yeah, maybe not, but maybe. What about on this channel? There's a bunch of wires in the way. Oh, it's kind of hard to tell. But two Class D amplifiers, digital amps. Very nice laid out power supply board. Motorized volume control. Couple of tube preamps right there. And they have convenient cutout windows in the front of the unit so you can see them. That awesome or what? But let's go ahead and hook this up to some speakers. And we'll see what it actually does. Yes, those caps are all bulged. Have they been hot? Or were they just under-designed? Same thing on the other channel. Those four caps right there. I'll have bulged tops. Okay, here we go. Power on. Oh my God, did you hear that? The right channel is absolutely squealing. So I'm not sure what is on and what is off because the light turns blue and green. I'm assuming that blue is power on. But I have a very high frequency squeal on the right channel. The left channel actually sounds okay. Oh, listen to that. It's changing. I'm just going to get my hot air blower out right here and I'm going to heat up those caps and see if the frequency changes. Oh, big change. Oh, listen to that. With the exception of the blower, it's totally quiet right now. I hear a ticking sound though. Let's heat them up a bit more. So I'm not sure what the ticking sound is. It's about one tick per second. All right, here we go. Let's put some audio into it. So the left channel sounds absolutely perfect, but the right channel, let me go and disconnect the left channel. So this is what the right channel sounds like. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat up those caps once again on the right channel amplifier board. Listen to the distortion. Oh dear. Oh, I just get total distortion. 
no audio at all out of the right channel. But the left channel sounds perfect. So that's the left channel. And you can still hear the right channel clicking. So I'm going to have to pull this board completely out of the right channel and check all these caps and see what shape they're actually in. And I think we're going to get a CAT scan too. Yeah, I don't have a lab, but we could use a lab test on this as well. Okay, so here are the four capacitors. They are 100 microfarad, 10 volt capacitors. So let's go ahead and ESR them. There are these four right here. One, two, three, four. They're all bulged. So I'd like to see about a half an ohm or less if possible. Well, that one reads 1.1 ohms. That one reads 2.4 ohms. That one's 0.44, getting closer. That one's 0.36. Well, in my book, all four of those are definitely out of tolerance. So unfortunately, I don't have any 100 microfarad 10 volts, but I do have some 100 microfarad 25 volts by Lelon. They are pretty good quality, just a budget cap. Let's go ahead and ESR one of those and see what they check like. And I like that much better, 0.19 ohms. That's what I would expect to see from a good quality cap. I'll go ahead and quickly check the other three as well. 0.2 on that one, 0.19 on that one, and 0.19. I definitely like that better than the two and four ohm ESR that these capacitors currently have. So I've got my 0.8 millimeter tip on my HECO. I'm gonna go ahead and zip these out of the board and we'll throw four new Lelon 100 microfarad 25 volt caps in their places. So I'm gonna start by just adding fresh solder because I'm sure this solder is lead free and it's very hard to melt. Okay, so fresh globs of new leaded solder in place. Let's go ahead and see if we can zip those off of the board, replace it with new caps and see, hopefully it makes a difference. All right, well, those four caps came off perfectly fine. No board damage whatsoever. Let's go ahead and throw some new ones on. I already did verify that the negative lead does go on this side right here. So hopefully these new ones, which are slightly larger than the old ones, will fit. So I thought for a fun experiment, we'd go ahead and just check the pads with the capacitors out and see what the pads test like. So just the pad alone test 0.96. 2.5 on that one. 0.15 and 0.15. Let's go ahead and just check those capacitors out of circuit and see how they test. Okay, so the one lone capacitor that was not attached tests 41 ohms, 40 ohms. That thing is absolutely terrible. Next, we have the three capacitors that are all glued back together. Try to get a common on all three of these at once. 31 ohms, 24 ohms, and 29 ohms. Every one of those is absolutely terrible. Well, I feel much better about slapping new capacitors into this unit right now, and hopefully it will make some kind of a change. Well, I've decided just because the other caps tested so bad, I'm going to go ahead and change the rest of these as well. So once again, I'm going to add some fresh solder to these just to help removal process. Pulled one lead out, oh well. And that one is in there.
Okay, got them all out. All right, all the caps have been changed. Let's go ahead and ESR the caps I pulled back out of there. Remember these two were 56s. They're now 47s. That was a 47, that is a 22. So let's go ahead and ESR all the old caps and see how they test. Okay, starting off with a 100 at 25, and it reads 3.6 ohms, that's terrible. This one is a 56 at 35 volts. It got replaced with a 47. Actually, it still checks pretty good. I do like 0 0.09 and 0 0.10 ohms. This one is the other 56 microfarad cap. 0 0.11, 0 0.10, perfectly fine. And unfortunately I can't test that 47 because it didn't unsolder and I ended up pulling the lead out of it. Now to check the 22, 3.1 ohms, just a little bit high. I'd like to see about one ohm on that thing. But all the caps have been changed. I'm gonna hit it with some magical solution acetone. We'll clean up the board, put it back in there and hopefully get better results. If we do, I'll go ahead and change all the caps on the other board as well. All right, there we go. Board's all cleaned up. Let's go ahead and put it back in and hopefully, once again, better results. Well, unfortunately, this one's gonna have to go back unrepaired. I'm gonna call it a successful failure because I changed all the cap. They definitely were bad. I think the bad cap probably damaged possibly this one big IC right here. I did swap these boards and the problem didn't move to the other channel. So the other channel is working absolutely perfectly. But if I disconnect the good channel and I turn the volume up, it does appear to be amplifying momentarily. It's just going into some kind of protective mode. I'm not quite sure what is going on there. But unfortunately, it's gonna to have to be a successful failure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and return this one back to the customer as is unrepaired. Just a basic half hour diagnostic charge. I'm gonna leave my caps in there. Maybe he can send it back to the factory and get a new amp board put in it. I can't find any schematics on these chips. There's a couple of chips on the bottom. I checked all the coupling caps on the Class D amplifier. They're all perfectly fine. But anyhow, that's it. The end of the video. I certainly hope you enjoyed the successful failure on the Peachtree Audio Grand Integrated X1 amplifier. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video, even though it is a successful failure. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this successful failure video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.